in case you are checking out the channel for the first time this year. It is a new year. Everyone's got lots of resolutions and plans and goals happening. Uh, so today's video is for anyone whose New Year's resolution or goal for 2024 is to start making their own clothes. Uh, I'm very specifically using the word making here. Uh, as most of what I'm going to say applies to both knitting and sewing, which are basically the two major ways you might go about making your own clothes. Um, you could learn to weave, <laughs> um, you can crochet, but those are the big two, knitting and sewing. And so what I'm going to talk about today is going to pretty much apply to both of those. Uh, and these are just some tips in case you are have been, have been thinking about making your own clothes and just really aren't sure where to start. So whether you already actually have these skills and just don't know how to jump into the actual making of clothes, uh, or if you're starting absolutely from scratch, we're gonna go through uh, some good tips for starting to make, knit or sew, your own clothes in 2024. So what makes me qualify to offer my advice on making your own clothes? I have been making my own clothes um, for well over a decade. I started knitting in 2007 and I have knit all of these things and many, many more. Uh, and I started sewing about three years ago. I started right away with garments and I have sewn all of these things and others as well. So uh, I do have some experience with making your own clothes. Uh, it is one of the uh, great joys in my life. It is a wonderful way to uh, explore your creativity, to get a wardrobe that is exactly what you want, a wardrobe that fits you, that is, you know, your colors, your size, your style. Um, and um, if you are concerned about uh, fast fashion and sustainability, it is a way to sort of counteract those as well. So that is where I'm coming to you from uh, in terms of knowledge about making your own clothes. So let's jump in and, and get a few tips. Uh, the first step you are going to take is to learn the basics. For most garments, you will have to know how to do a lot more than the basics to make your own clothes. However, a lot of that learning is going to happen along the way. Um, you're going to see a new technique or a new um, abbreviation or terminology in your pattern. You're going to say, what is that? You're going to go to YouTube, you're going to look it up, you're going to learn how to do it, and then you're going to do it. Um, but you really do have to know at least the basics before you get started. Um, the very first thing you might want to consider if you don't actually have one of these skills already um, is which one of these is going to be more practical for you, sewing or knitting. If you live in a place where it rarely gets cold, knitting might not be for you. Uh, if you live in a place where it is frigid all the time, knitting might be a better choice. That's not to say that you cannot knit with uh, plant-based fibers and you cannot sew with woolen fibers, but generally speaking, knitting garments or knit garments are geared more toward cold weather and sewn garments, you know, are, are a little bit more flexible in terms of, you know, you can layer them. Sure, you can make your own coats, um, but you know, shirts and basic shirts and pants are not like super warm, super cold weather things. So consider um, where you live, what kind of stuff you usually wear. Um, maybe you want to learn both, like I did, <laughs> um, ultimately, uh, and that's certainly an option. Um, but you want to make sure that you are choosing the one that is most practical for where you are at this at this period in time in your life. But regardless of which one you choose, you're going to want to learn the basics before you start. So if what you're choosing is knitting, you want to know how to cast on, which is how to start your project. You want to know how to knit and purl, which are the two basic stitches. And you want to know how to bind off, which is how you end your project. And if what you want to do is learn to sew, you need to learn how to use a sewing machine. Um, regardless of what it is you need to learn, there are a lot of options out there. Um, of course, tons of tutorials all over YouTube. If you are looking for a how to knit tutorial, well, let me direct you to my Knitting 101 series. I also have a Knitting 102 series. It's going to get you started with the basics. Um, there are also 
uh, lots of different websites out there designed to teach you things. So uh, a couple in particular that I can recommend are Skillshare and Craftsy. So Craftsy is where I learned to sew. Uh, another great option is if you have a local yarn store or a fabric store, um, they may also offer classes. So there are lots and lots of ways that you can learn. You don't need to be taught in person. Um, I was not taught in person for either knitting or sewing. So for knitting, I just watched a lot of videos online and read a lot of how to knit books and taught myself. Um, and then again, for, for sewing, I took a specific sewing class on Craftsy. Um, a lot of this depends on your particular learning, um, your particular learning strategy, the way that you learn best. But you've got a lot of options out there. But before you even get started trying to learn to make your own clothes, you definitely want to get the basics mastered. You need to have some, you don't have to know absolutely everything. No one ever does. There's always something new to learn, but you need to get those basics down. You don't have to be perfect at them, um, but you need to, you know, generally know how to make your sewing machine sew a line and how to knit some stitches uh, before you can tackle anything more, uh, more in depth. All right, my next suggestion, if you are hoping to learn to make your own clothes, um, you're learning the basics, you've got those underway, you're practicing, um, you wanna buy the best quality supplies and materials that you can afford. So um, there is a big temptation to cheap out on what you're using just in case it doesn't stick and you decide you don't want to knit or you don't want to sew, however, Practicing these things um, is a lot more enjoyable when you are using good supplies, good tools, good materials. So um, this is particularly, I want to say, the case with knitting. Um, you know, you can get a basic pair of knitting needles for probably five bucks um, and a really cheap ball of wool at Michael's or Joann's, you know, for two dollars. Um, but if your needles are uncomfortable to use, if the fabric is not sliding over them, it's gonna slow you down. You're not gonna be enjoying what you're doing and that is less likely, um, then it's less likely that you are gonna continue on that path. That doesn't mean you have to buy the most expensive stuff available either, but you want to pick the best quality that you can afford, uh, you know, whatever your current economic situation may be. So basically what I'm saying is don't just get the super cheapy stuff just in case. Um, you don't have to get top of the line. Pick it somewhere in the middle so that uh, you know that your tools and materials are going to be cooperating and working with you. In terms of sewing, uh, this is a little bit different because <laughs> um, even a, uh, a cheaper end sewing machine is going to cost you a couple of hundred dollars. So I'm not necessarily going to say you should spring for a more expensive sewing machine knowing that you may not use it. Um, but you know, do your research, make sure that, you know, there are some low cost options, but make sure you are getting one uh, that has some good reviews that, that people have been happy with as maybe a starter machine. Um, so don't just grab, you know, whatever the cheapest, cheapest one is just because it's the cheapest. Make sure you are checking out that quality because it is going to impact your enjoyment of what you're doing and that is going to impact whether or not you stick with it. Now in terms of sewing materials, I wouldn't say your, your, the quality of your fabric, I mean that's definitely a concern, but um, you want to make sure that you are starting with a fabric that you, that you like but that is not something you know super uh, slippery and hard to work with or um, that is not a knit fabric because you need um, extra tools um, generally speaking it's on a standard sewing machine it is i won't say impossible but it is difficult to work with knit fabrics and so you want to look for woven fabrics but not uh, something like super kind of silky and slippery because those are very tricky to work with. Um, so you want to start with something like cotton, linen, or a blend. Probably not starting with, you know, lycra or, um, which is a knit fabric, or, you know, um, ram chali, which is it's just a very slippery fabric. Um, you, again, should, you know, you want to make sure you get a cotton that is that is comfortable to wear or a linen that is comfortable to wear and that you're enjoying using and you like the colors and the patterns and all that. But um, 
the big concern is not necessarily that you're using like a super expensive fabric, but that you are using a fabric that is um, relatively easy to work with to get started. Uh, and the same is true for knitting. Uh, I will not say you have to use wool. Um, I think if you uh, have ever seen anything on the channel before, you know how I feel about acrylic yarn, um, but you want to buy um, a yarn that is comfortable next to your skin that you're actually gonna wanna wear, a yarn that is, um, you know, easy on your hands. There are some cottons out there that are very soft and, and nice to work with, and there are some that are really kind of can tear your hands apart almost. Um, I do suggest not using an acrylic yarn for your garment. They're not, they're not very flexible. They tend to just kind of shrink back into their original shape, uh, which means that your finished garment may not look as nice as you were hoping. So uh, again, it doesn't have to be wool, um, but I, I don't recommend acrylic for your first garment because um, it's just not gonna showcase all of your hard work uh, to the best of, of your abilities. And the next thing you really want to get a handle on before you jump into garment making is how garment sizing works. It is different for knitting and for sewing. And my number one tip in this regard is to learn how to take your own measurements. Once you know what your own measurements are, it is gonna be a lot easier to pick the correct size, whether you're knitting or sewing. Why does this matter? Because if the very first garment that you make doesn't fit you, you are really unlikely to keep going. Because a big thing, you know, learning a new skill, making your own clothes, it is a big time investment. And if you are not getting that payoff where you have a finished thing that you are so excited to wear and to show everybody, you're not going to keep going. Um, that's not to say your first garment is going to be perfect. It certainly is not, no matter what you are doing, knitting or sewing. But fit is a really big thing. You know, there are going to be mistakes here and there, but if it doesn't fit, that's, that's a big mistake and uh, you're not going to keep going. So as I said, learn how to take your own measurements, make sure, and there's again, YouTube tutorials um, all over the place for this. Make sure you know how to do it and actually do it. And that is going to help you learn how to pick your size, whether you're knitting or sewing. So for knitting, uh, most garments are going to provide a finished bust measurement, the circumference around the bust, or an intended size, meaning it will say this size X is designed to fit bust measurement Y. Um, as a new knitter, this might not mean much to you and so I want to suggest that you do a little bit more digging because um, all garments have something called ease which basically means the difference between the finished measurement of the garment and your actual body measurements and um, everyone's ease preferences are different uh, certain styles of garments have different types of ease, you know, some sweaters are closer fitting, some are supposed to be more of a boxy fit. Um, and that is information that is gonna be helpful to you to pick your size. So if you wanna know what your measurements are, almost all patterns are just going to, at the very start, give you the bust measurement. Um, but you should know all of your, all of your relevant measurements if you're making clothes. Um, and that's just your starting point. Make sure you know what your measurements are in order to make sure you are going to pick an accurate size for your first garment. For sewing, it can be similar. Um, sewing patterns tend to have a number, whereas knitting patterns have largely moved away from this. So if you were looking at the big sewing, uh, sewing pattern maker, so McCall, Simplicity, Vogue, um, there's another one I'm missing, Berta. They usually will still say something like 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. This is absolutely nothing to do with your clothing size and ready to wear clothes. Not a darn thing. Um, and there is no, <laughs> I am sorry to say, there is absolutely no connection between, you know, the sizing in these big, big four patterns and the smaller pattern companies like Closet Core or Seamwork or, um, Friday Pattern Company, all of those, 
nothing because those also usually have a number and in my experience those numbers are a little bit closer to ready to wear sizing uh, than the big four but there's you can't be like oh I wear a six here so I should wear it mm -mm. Um, so you need to sort of do some digging on that however the pattern just like with the knitting pattern should tell you what the key finished measurements are um, and for a sewing pattern you are going to get more of those so where a knitting pattern you might just get the bust uh, for a sewing pattern at the least you are going to get the bust the waist and the hips usually i mean unless it's pants then you don't need the bust um, and you also want to consider ease there so don't worry about what the sizing designations are whether it says extra small, small, medium, six, eight, ten, don't worry about that. You want to look at, um, you can look at what their recommendation is for your this size, you should wear this. But what you really want to check out are the finished measurements and compare them to your own. That is really going to help you um, pick your size. And it is, it can be a little upsetting uh, when you start knitting. So in ready to wear clothes, uh, I'm generally a, a four or six. Um, a small or a medium. If I'm knitting a McCall's pattern, I gotta pick. I could pick a 14 sometimes or a 12, and that was very upsetting to me. <laughs> um, but don't let that be upsetting to you because the numbers are meaningless. Check your finished measurements. Know what your measurements are. That is going to help you make sure that for your very first garment, you are picking something that is actually going to fit you. Okay, so you've learned the basics. You've got some decent quality materials. You've figured out, you know, generally speaking, what uh, what your finished what your body measurements are, and so what size finished garments uh, are most likely to fit you. Now, what are you going to do? Um, regardless of whether it's knitting or sewing, a lot of places are going to suggest you start with something like a scarf or a tote bag. Um, and you absolutely can do that. But if your end goal is to make garments, um, you may quickly get dissatisfied with making something you're not actually going to use. And that may put you off. So uh, don't think that you have to start with a scarf or a tote bag. You absolutely can if you want to, and they are a great way to start learning those basic skills and maybe even start um, exploring some uh, more um, involved techniques, but it's not necessary because there absolutely are garment patterns out there, both knitting and sewing for beginners. Um, the great thing about sewing is that the patterns will often tell you beginner, advanced, beginner, intermediate, advanced. That's really helpful. <laughs> knitting, not so much. So you kind of have to know what to look for. Um, in general, if you are looking to knit your very first sweater, a really good choice, in my opinion, is what is called a drop shoulder. There's not a lot of shaping, meaning um, they're not designed to be an exact fit for your body. They're supposed to be blocky and boxy and oversized, uh, so there's not as much going on. There's not as many things to worry about. However, there are a lot of different sweater styles, which is something you will learn uh, as you get more into knitting. And um, several of them could make a good first sweater project. What do you want to look for? Um, no set in sleeves. That is a very complicated technique that I do not recommend for beginners. Um, uh, nothing with short rows. Um, and again, if you don't knit yet, maybe don't know what that is. It's just a shaping technique that is a little bit more advanced. Um, so you want to look for a garment that looks pretty straightforward. It is uh, a basic piece of fabric. It doesn't have a lot of decoration. Um, it has a red, like a generally speaking, a, um, a, a boxy or a loose fit. It's not designed to be close fitting. It just doesn't have, um, a whole lot of crazy stuff going on. That doesn't mean it won't be fun to knit. Um, there are some really cute beginner patterns out there. And uh, even for more advanced knitters, you know, we sometimes like to head back to a beginner pattern to get something that's just a little less involved and doesn't require as much brain power to work through. So they definitely exist. Um, if you're familiar with Ravelry, 
which can be a great resource for knitters. You can um, search their pattern listings and look for some of these basic things. So look for a drop shoulder sweater or look for sweaters that are knit with heavier yarn because that's gonna go a little bit faster. Um, you know, it can be a little challenging on your hands to use, you know, tiny yarn and tiny needles. So maybe you wanna look for something that uh, is gonna be a little quicker. Um, look for things that are relatively plain. Um, you know, it's not, not maybe you don't wanna jump right off with um, a, a fair isle design or intricate cables look for something that is just a pretty straightforward sweater. It's gonna help you learn some techniques. As I said, you're just gonna learn a lot of things as you go along, how to increase or decrease your, your number of stitches, um, how to add trim, things like that. You're gonna learn them by doing. As long as you've mastered sort of starting, knitting, and binding off, you've got a good foundation for a basic sweater pattern. Uh, for sewing, again, a lot of the patterns are designated and that can be really helpful, but you also have a basic knowledge of clothing. So you got to figure that putting in a zipper is going to be tricky. A very tailored shirt is obviously going to be something that is more complicated than something that's kind of loose and flowy and boxy and, um, you know, absolutely as you learn and whether it's knitting or sewing, as you learn and practice, you are going to gain the skills to successfully execute nicely tailored garments that really fit you. But if you try to tackle one of those right from the start, you may get overwhelmed and then give up. So you don't have to start with a washcloth or you know a, a tote bag or whatever, um, but you do wanna look for something that is specifically designed for beginners that is gonna help you build your skills without making you insane um, by using all kinds of, of new techniques um, that is just too much out all at once. All right, so once you've actually started on this making your own clothes journey, you wanna stick with it, obviously. And my big tip here is that you shouldn't be afraid of mistakes because mistakes are going to happen. No one is good at knitting or sewing right away. And I, I really sympathize because I am one of those people where if I'm not good at something right away, I just don't wanna do it anymore. Um, but mistakes are a part of learning. Sound like a pre-K pre teacher. Mistakes are a part of learning. Uh, you were going to learn from your mistakes. You're going to learn what, learn what to do and what not to do. Um, you're going to learn what elements of making your own garments require uh, more patience. Um, and that's going to help you move forward. So do not live in fear of mistakes. They're going to be a part of learning. Um, yarn can be unraveled, seams can be ripped out, and you can do it again. Um, I know mistakes can be disheartening, but if you go into it thinking like you're never going to make a mistake, well, that's not very realistic. So assume that there will be mistakes. Mistakes are a part of learning. And even, you know, advanced knitters and sewers, sewists, sewers, make mistakes. That is why seam rippers exist. Um, shit happens. Unravel it unrip the seam and, and fix it and move on. So um, the only thing <laughs> that you really can't undo is if you cut your fabric wrong. And this is definitely my favorite thing about knitting as compared to sewing. Once the fabric has been cut, and I have made mistakes before, it is cut. And it's um, rare that you can recut a piece to work. Um, so that part is, is a little tricky about sewing. Um, move on, you try some new fabric. Um, that is a nice thing about knitting. Yarn can always be unraveled, um, almost always be unraveled and reused. Um, so definitely take extra care when you're cutting your fabric if you are learning sewing. But other than that, while you're doing the actual sewing, um, don't be afraid of making mistakes. Otherwise, you're not going to get anywhere. All right. And my last tip to help you on your learning to make clothes journey is to look for communities that can support you. Um, in terms of knitting, Ravelry used to be a really big place for community. Um, 
some events over there in recent years have made it so while it is still a very good database for searching for patterns and buying patterns the community aspect is not there as much um, there is a great knitting community on Ravelry no <laughs> but there is a great knitting community on Instagram um, there is also a sewing community on Instagram um, if you were looking for a place with a lot of like discussion and back and forth and I would recommend checking out Seamwork they um, are working over there to build like a nice community space where people can share their projects and talk. Um, so your fellow makers are out there and this is especially important if you don't have people in your, you know, in real life um, that are makers. Um, and so you don't have anybody to talk to about your stuff. Um, there's great communities online everywhere. Definitely on YouTube, you will find sewing and knitting. I mean, here, <laughs> this is the knitting channel, a knitting channel, um, but it, it's really everywhere. So make sure that you're kind of looking for that. Just look for your look for your knitting or your sewing on Instagram and start commenting on people's projects. Just that's how you're gonna find you know people to follow, people to share with. Um, and people that are going to support you in this journey. Don't underestimate the usefulness of a community of like-minded makers who will be able to support you, not just, you know, answering questions that you might have, but just kind of being a cheerleader for you uh, as you are embarking on your clothes making journey. All right, so those are my tips as a knitter and sewist uh, for starting your journey on making your own clothes in 2024. Um, and in addition, in the description box down below, I have linked a few garment patterns, um, both knitting and sewing, that I think are uh, good candidates for beginners in case you want to check those out. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you found it useful, I hope you will uh, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Lots of knitting and sometimes sewing stuff going on around here. Uh, I also hope you'll take a moment to tap the join button and just find out a little bit more about the opportunity to um, join the membership program and help support the channel that way if you have a chance. Thank you again for checking out this video and I will see you soon in another video. Bye.